Okay, now next we'll talk about OCD. This is probably an overstatement, but I'd almost rather have schizophrenia than severe OCD. I mean, OCD, full-blown OCD, is just horrible. It just, uh, it just dominates people's life. It just ruins lives like crazy. And the, uh, the treatment of choice is exposure-based therapy. And it works, okay? But it is very hard to find therapists that will really do this the right way. Now, here in town, there's a, a, a group practice called the Anxiety uh, Treatment Clinic in Northern California, and they do it the right way. And I've sent people with OCD there who've had excellent results, okay? They do it by the book. But the problem is that you have, it's hard to find therapists in many communities, and also the exposure part of this where, like, for instance, two-thirds of people have OCD, that they have fears of dirt, germs, contamination, and that kind of stuff, and they are the hand washing. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. When they're, oh shoot, shoot. Sorry. when they are told that they are eventually going to have to touch something dirty, you know, touch a dirty toilet seat, oh, thank you, thank you, uh, then a lot of people say forget it, and they won't do it. About 25% of people that have OCD opt out of behavior therapy before they even try it, and another 25% will drop out after the first one or two sessions. So this is an example of something that looks good, you know, in the journals because they have high rates of success, but that assumes they actually do the treatment, okay? And if it's not available or they won't do it, then that's a problem, okay? Okay. This is especially bad because a third to a half of OCD patients, it starts when they're kids, and OCD doesn't go away. It, there's wax and waning in severity levels, but if you don't treat it, it does not go away, okay? Hardly any spontaneous uh, remission. Uh, also take a look at this. If you treat and you get very good results with medication and wait two years, five years, ten years, whatever, stop the medication, more than 95% of people, the symptoms come back full blown. So this, this very clearly is a disorder that, uh, that the, if the medication uh, can be very helpful but it is suppressing symptoms, okay? The choices for medication are uh, two different classes, SSRIs and then anaphronil. Now, anaphronil is a uh, <clears throat> tricyclic antidepressant, and it's got a lot of side effects. It's got uh, mainly anticholinergic effects, uh, dry mouth, constipation, blurry vision, also, weight gain uh, is very common as well. Uh, somewhat higher rate of se spontaneous seizures can occur with this. I mean, it doesn't at all sound like a drug that anybody would take. And it, it's, it is an antidepressant, but it's never used for treating depression because there's not a depressed person on this planet who would tolerate these side effects. But you know what? If, you have, if you are, your life is being ruined by OCD, these people will do almost anything to get rid of it. And so if anaphronil is needed, then most people with OCD will tolerate the side effects because of the benefit it gives. Why would you use anaphronil? Because it's more effective. It's the most effective drug for treating OCD. But typically because of the side effect problems, uh, people start off uh, with SSRIs and only switch to or add anaphronil if, if they need to. Now this is very, very different than all of the other in anxiety disorders, or at least most of them, and that is that you crank the dose up, you usually have to get pretty high doses. I mentioned this before with OCD, and then you have to really wait. If you get up to high doses and you stay at high doses over a long period of time, you're going to get gradual improvement. And you can see here uh, that by week 10, you may get somewhere between 25 and 30 percent reduction in OCD symptoms. And we have to tell our patients, stay with it, okay, because there's this gradual improvement that occurs out to about a year, and then it begins to plateau. And, and so for most people, then, uh, or for about, excuse me, for about two-thirds of people have a relatively good response to this. The relatively good is looking at 
50% uh, or sometimes 60% reduction in symptoms. The effect size is not impressive. It's better than placebo for sure. But this is one of the examples of where you look at something like this and say, okay, two-thirds of people have modest uh, reduction of symptoms, but in human terms, it's huge. Every person who's got a 50% reduction in OCD symptoms, you know, after being on the medicine for a year, is going to say, thank God for this medicine, because it's reduced the, the frequency and intensity of symptoms enough that I can have a life, and please don't ever take me off this medication. Okay, it really reduces suffering, even though it falls way short of, you know, uh, eliminating the symptoms. <clears throat> now, augmentation. Uh, there, there are two major approaches to augmenting for OCD. One of those is to augment with atypical antipsychotics. Now, I want to be very clear about this. This is not suggesting these people have psychotic symptoms because by definition they don't. Uh, people with OCD have these really whack, wacky ideas about you know stuff being dangerous, but they'll tell you, I realize this is crazy, nobody else thinks this way, but they're not delusional, okay? But adding atypical antipsychotics, uh, like, for instance, Abilify maybe is, is oftentimes used because it doesn't have a lot of sedation and metabolic side effects. Uh, small doses of that can make a difference. Uh, actually, I left out a slide here. There should be also augmentation with anaplanil. Now, let me tell you about this because there's a real particular issue with adding anaplanil to an SSRI. In our first class, we talked about uh, that the SSRIs, some of them can have an effect on liver functioning. Remember that? They can inhibit liver enzymes. Okay, a lot of the SSRIs, if you add anaphronil in at normal doses, it won't be metabolized as quick and it'll really get high blood levels and people will get uh, side effects or toxicity. So the strategy then is if you use an SSRI, and you use really tiny doses of anaphronil, like 10 or 25 milligrams. And that typically will then jack up the levels uh, well enough in the bloodstream that, that they're going to work. Okay? So those are, those are two that you wouldn't do that unless the other approach really was not working. 